Hi. <laughs> hey, it's me. So today, as you can tell from the title, we're gonna be making a fancy shawl. I am making a fancy shawl regalia for myself. And I thought I would take you along the ride and show you how I did it. You're also going to see me do voiceovers throughout the video like this to save you from having to listen to my ums and uhs for an hour. So yes, this is gonna be vlog tutorial style. This isn't the first time I've made um, fancy shawl regalia. I've made quite a few in my day, but I am doing some different things with this one. I'm gonna be using some different methods, which if you don't know what I mean by vlog tutorial, I do two different kinds of tutorials. I do a tutorial, which is me formally giving you directions saying, this is how I create something. Um, and these are instructions that you can rely on to use for yourself. And then I do vlog tutorials, which is basically me saying, look, I'm no expert, this is how I do it, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how I did it. Take these instructions with a grain of salt. <laughs> So real quickly, I'm going to go over um, some of the materials that I'm using that you, you'll you need if you're following this. As always, there is a list in the description of materials that I used along with links to some of them. So if I miss anything here um, on video, go to the description box. There will be a list of things there. All right, so first thing is fabric. There are unlimited types of fabric that you can use on fancy shawl and of course you can use um, different types just design wise so you might pick several colors and piece them together in different ways as a design for your shawl or you might use different fabrics different textures. A few things that I want to point out when it comes to fabrics and materials for your fancy shawl regalia is particularly with the shawl, you don't really want to pick anything that is stretchy. So go through, uh, if you find any materials that you like when you're at the craft, the fabric store, uh, stretch them, see if they're stretchy. If they are, it might not be a good idea for you to use that. Some people do suggest um, checking how easily the materials wrinkle as well. And that's because Fancy Shawl, um, being that the shawl is like the, the main part of the show, right? It wraps around your body, um, it moves, so it might, it wrinkles in different spots while you're in action, right? Especially the part where you grab the material with your hands that part can permanently wrinkle. So um, some people say like, if you're going to a lot of rural powwows where it's like camping, you're not in a building where you can, you know, plug in an iron <laughs> to iron it flat, then maybe look for materials that are non-wrinkle. So again, when you're in the fabric store and you see something you like, go ahead and give it a little squeeze. And if it wrinkles and stays wrinkled, just from you doing that, that might not be the best way to go. But you know, that's really just um, a thing that has to do with like idealism. So if you're willing to forgive wrinkles <laughs> in your shawl, then I would say, don't worry about that. What I have chosen, I have chosen a shiny satin. As you can see, it does wrinkle. That's something that I'm willing to forgive. I have a black color and I also have a silver kind of rustic color. And then because it's a fancy shawl and like I said, you want to be as fancy as you can. This is not a traditional dance. This is very fancy, right? So you can really get creative with this is I got a dark blue tool. I want to put this on the dress. So 
I don't know why I'm mentioning it right now when it's not needed for the shawl. But yeah, I'm using this on the dress. You'll see this in the next video when I'm going to be using. So these next items right here are totally optional for you. And it really depends on how you are going to make the shawl. So we'll talk about um, those different ways, those different options that you have for making the shawl in a moment. But here I have bias tape. I'm constructing my shawl in a way where I'm going to need these. And then I also have some rainbow zigzag. Again, these are optional. I'll show you what I'm using these for. These are partially functional and then really just for decoration. Okay, so instead of purchasing ribbon from my local craft store, I actually ordered ribbon online and that is so that I could get great big old spools of it so i have three spools each has a hundred yards on it this should be enough you do have different options for the width of the ribbon that you would like these are three eighths of an inch i wanted a thinner ribbon um, just to make my shawl just extra fringy um, create lots of movement on my shawl but you can really make your ribbon as thick as you want to make it anywhere in between you know this and i'd say like an inch is probably the highest i would go but of course there's the more cord like fringe this isn't one of those shawls this is going to be a shawl with satin ribbon and i believe this is one-sided yeah it's one-sided so that means the satin's only on one side but again it really doesn't make too much of a difference if you get one-sided satin or double-sided satin which means like the shininess is on both sides it's whatevs and then this is part of the reason why i decided to make this vlog tutorial style instead of tutorial style and that's because i'm kind of doing an experiment with the fringe so i have here some heat bond lights this is like a heat bond strip like i said this is totally optional but this is for my experiment i haven't seen anybody do this um thing that i'm about to experiment with uh, so I'm going to try it and see if it works uh, and hopefully it does and if it doesn't I'll be able to manage. In addition to that heat bond I have a great big old piece of cardboard. <laughs> you can definitely find different um, materials to use for the step that I'm using cardboard for. This isn't the size I'm gonna leave it at. I am going to cut it down to the size that I want it to be. But yeah, I have a great big old piece of cardboard and this is going to be for me to uh, cut out my ribbon. Yeah, so I'm gonna get started. So I forgot to say how much fabric I got because I got enough that I thought I could make a shawl and a dress. I think this might be like three and a half for the black and I know I got double for the silver, so anyway. I'm sure people have different ideas on how to size a shawl, but what I know is to make it as wide as your wingspan. Your wingspan is generally around the same measurement as your height, so you could also base the size of your shawl on your height. I'm 5'6", which is 66 inches, so I'm making my shawl 66 inches wide. Yep, so this is about how much that I have allotted for the shawl, which I think is good. As for the length of your shawl, you have a lot more creative liberty to make it however long you like. I'm making my shawl shorter and my fringe longer. Some people like to make their shawl longer and their fringe shorter. You could also size them anywhere in between. In this video, the fabric of my shawl will reach down to the middle of my backside. The overall shawl from the top of the fabric to the bottom of the fringe will be from my shoulders down to my mid calf. 
So determine where you would like the bottom of the fabric to end, then measure from that area of your body to your shoulders. Add seam allowance on all four sides if your shawl will be two layers, and don't add allowance if it's one layer. I lucked out here though, because the size of the bolt ended up being the perfect length for my body, so I just cut the fabric along the fold. I did this after cutting the width, of course. Then I took the fabrics down to the floor so I could play around with how I was going to work out the design for this shawl. So I think the hardest part about this thing, this whole thing, isn't even putting it together. It's deciding how to design it. I have some blue ribbon here that I just had like in my supply and I was kind of thinking, um, you know, that Contemporary traditional type Ojibwe art where um, we have lines signifying, you know, pathways in the body. I was thinking maybe I could use these for that and I just, I'm not 100% sure how I want to do that. So I'm just going to play around with this, um, try to avoid my cat <laughs> and check in in a bit. I just realized that I forgot to ever mention to you that I am very loosely modeling my shawl after the raven's wingspan. Anyway, here's some footage of me working out the design. So I have all this done here. This is what it looks like underneath. Um, it does look a little puckered, but I think that with some ironing and the weight of the ribbons, then these puckers won't be so obvious. The next step that I want to do is fray block the sides. As you can see, there's a whole lot of fraying already taking place. So I want to take care of that before I get to any sort of applique or any ribbon attachment. That would be done before the ribbon attachment anyway. But there's two different ways to do it. And the way that I'm doing it is with bias tape. So real quickly, I just want to talk about if you were using two layers um, to line the inside of your shawl, what you would do then is put the layers next to each other and then you would fold each layer inward like that and then iron it and then you would do the ribbon application now by putting the ribbons in between the two layers. But I'm going to be edging this material with bias tape so it's pretty straightforward. You just put the material between the bias tape and then the ribbon application will go on top of the bias tape on the inside of the shawl. So yeah, I'm just going to take this bias tape and straight stitch it on after I clip off some of these extra strings. Oh my god! No! My cat just put a hole in here. At least it's on like the corner where my hands hold onto it anyway. Hello, editing Chelsea here, just popping in quickly to say that now would be the time to do your applique, um, which would be after fray blocking the edges of your shawl and before applying the ribbon. Um, in my case, since I'm doing one single layer, I really could add applique whenever I want, but it's just so much easier to complete it without having all the fringe in your way. Okay, so I tried my little experiment off camera because I wanted to just see how it works, um, figure out everything that I need to figure out before putting it on camera, which I'm happy I did because I did mess up and have to redo it. But this is what I have so far. I have this black fringe. Um, it is 20 inches. 
So real quickly, before I got to the fringe, I made this cardboard block here. Um, I just cut it whatever uh, width here I wanted to, and then I took my ruler and marked down um, every five inches and every inch. But what is particular is the length here. Um, so I made it 20 inches and this length is to uh, map out the length of your fringe. So what I did was I started, um, and I'll show you in just a second, but I started the ribbon here and then I wrapped it down and around and around and around and around until I ended and then I taped it um, and then placed the strip on and cut it on the sides. So when you do this process, you're going to get a front and a back. So basically, let's say I wrap the ribbon around so that it's covering five inches. Because there's also ribbon on the back, that produces 10 inches of ribbon. I forgot to mention that I'm only doing one layer of ribbon. Earlier in the video, I included a note about doubling up your ribbon. Basically, that means that for each spot you place a ribbon on, you'll actually place two layers of ribbon. This just makes your fringe thicker, so it's totally up to you if you want one layer or two. If you decide on two layers, you can still use a cardboard block to cut out the fringe. Just cut down one side instead of both. If your block is 20 inches like mine, then that would produce 40 inch pieces, which you would then fold in half in order to form two 20 inch layers. Then you'll stitch the folded edge onto the shawl. So if you're doubling up ribbon, if you wrap the ribbon around to cover five inches of the block, that will produce five inches, not 10 like it would if you were cutting the front side of the wrap separate from the back side of the wrap. My little experiment I'm about to try will not work for doubling up your ribbon, but that's okay because I ended up abandoning my experiment anyways. <laughs> You'll see. I wasn't sure if my little experiment was going to work, but it did. The uh, heat bond, I attached it to the ribbon, cut it off, fray blocked the ends and all that, and then I ironed it onto the, uh, the shawl here, and it worked great. I haven't stitched it on. Obviously, you're not going to be able to just stop here. You do need to stitch. Um, and that's just because I'm going to put something over top. I'll show you that in a minute. And I just don't want too many stitches visible from the other side. So what I'm going to do now is this is all the black that I am adding. I do need to add four more ribbons right here. Um, the rest of the ribbon is going to be silver, mostly, or not silver. Yeah, silver. Mostly silver with a little bit of royal blue or navy blue navy blue in there um but yeah mostly silver i'm gonna get going on that and um once i get all that attached then we'll move on to the next step if you're using a block whether you're doing my little experiment or not i advise using tape such as masking tape and here i'm just preparing a few little pieces the ribbon that I have only has the shiny satin on one side, so I'm going to be placing it onto the block with the shiny satin side up. Then I taped it into place and wrapped it around the block the same amount of times on either side. So if you have 10 sides of ribbon on the front, make sure you have 10 on the back. Okay, so here is the end all taped off. I have 13 ribbons on each side. It's important that you do the same amount of ribbons. Um, and then it's about five inches wide. So um, for this next step, I do advise that you follow the steps in order that I give you. <laughs> um, and I'll explain why. So what I'm going to do next is here I have the heat bond strip, so I'm going to um, take the strip and just kind of 
loosely measure it up against here and then cut it slightly wider. So not exactly five inches, but a little bit wider than five inches. And I'm actually going to cut two pieces because we are working with two sides. And then the width of this uh, strip is 5 eighths of an inch. It actually says on the package, um, 5 eighths of an inch, which is wider than the bias tape that I put on the, the shawl. So I don't want, on the inside of the shawl, I don't want the ribbon to go any higher than the bias tape I laid down. But if I don't make it go higher, then you'll be able to see the um, remnant, you'll be able to see the glue from the heat bond on the ribbon underneath, which will look really sloppy. So what I'm actually gonna do is trim down each piece of this heat bond so that it's about the same width as the bias tape. Then I ironed the heat bond strip onto the ribbons using a cotton scrap as a barrier. Once you're done, turn the block over and repeat on the other side. Then I took some small scissors and clipped on each side of the block. Next, you need to fray block your ribbons and there's several ways that you can do this, but my method of choice is to melt the ends with the lighter. Carefully peel off any tapes used to hold the ribbon in place and remove the ribbon from the block. Having the ribbon stuck together side by side made for really easy fray blocking. And now I have two sections of fringe that I can basically apply all at once. Let me show you how. Cut off the excess heat bond from your strip of ribbons. Peel off the paper and then apply the strip to your shawl. The heat bond on the strip was pretty flimsy so this was kind of hard to do. Then iron with the cotton barrier. Make sure the strip has completely bonded to the shawl and allow it to cool. So here's my review of my own little experiment. I think this method could be great for those of you who are super novice at sewing. Similar to gluing ribbons onto a skirt to help you sew them on, this is great for beginners as I know many of you are nervous about your ability to sew straight or multitask holding ribbons in place while sewing them. It can also be helpful if you're nervous about whether your sections of colors are even and you want to sort of test it out before permanently sewing them on. However, I found that it may have taken me even longer to go through this process than it took for me to just sew on the ribbons individually. Keep in mind, I decided to do this experiment trying to save myself time. In addition, the heat bond is much lighter than the heat bond I'm used to that I use for applique, so it's really flimsy and barely holds the ribbons together. The strip kept ripping, which really defeated the purpose of bonding the ribbons into strips. There are several heavier weights of heat bond strips, but I'm not sure if they will gunk up your machine needle with glue or not. If you try this experiment, let me know if you liked it or if you hated it. But due to the roadblocks I just described, I did end up giving up on this experiment and just sewing the ribbons on individually. Real tradish, you know. Despite me abandoning the heat bond strips, I still used my cardboard block to help me cut the ribbons. I just held them together with masking tape, which still made it easier and faster to fray block the ribbons. Next is sewing the ribbons on. Remember that if your shawl is two layers, you sew the ribbon between the two layers. This shawl is one single layer of fabric, so the ribbon will just be attached at the outer edge of the fabric and on the inner side of the shawl that will be against your body. Whether you're doing one layer of ribbon or doubling up, you can simply stitch the ribbon to the shawl using a zigzag stitch, or you can take advantage of this step by adding some flair here. I'm applying a rickrack on top of the ribbon that will provide some color that will peekaboo while I'm dancing and will also function as some extra security for my ribbon. 
quick tip, I stitched on the rickrack at the same time as I stitched on the ribbon, so I won't have a ton of threads visible on the outside of my shawl. Then I did one more zigzag stitch on the edge of the ribbon and bias tape just to really make sure the edges are secure and no ribbon will ever fall off my shawl. Last call for the bl uh, Black Ash Basket. Come get your tickets behind the MC stand. Got it! 